Hello world and welcome to my channel where I share my programming related experiences. In this video, we will create a login form using Google API in a React project and we will store the state of whether a user is currently logging or not in Redux so that it is readily accessible in any of our components. This is the library that we will be using. This is Google API JavaScript client and it's available in GitHub. It has a documentation here of how to use this in JavaScript and the documentation is also available in Google. I will make both of these URLs available in the video description so that you can refer to them later. Before we begin, let me demonstrate what we will do. And by the way, this is our application. It's also already available in GitHub. So you can check it out later. The URL will also be available in the video description. So let's run our application. By running npm start. I'm assuming that you already know the basic basics of React. So I'm assuming that you know how to create a project using npx create react app. So here is our application. I think it's still loading. Code. Let's see. So later I will demonstrate what I'm doing here. Okay, so here we can see that we have the sign in with Google button. Actually, let's try that here. Let's open the console to see if there are errors. So let's hit sign in with Google. And as you can see, we have this prompt from Google. And let's select satsuya at gmail.com. And after login, we can see this number. This number is actually the Google ID of this user. So let's sign out, sign in, select, and sign out. So now let's see what's happening behind the code. But before we look into the code, let's first create our Google API account. If you haven't done so, go to console.developers.google.com and create your own project. So I already I already did and I have my courses project. Next is you have to create your own old concept screen for this project by selecting this old consent screen and select create a consent screen there should be a create consent screen here but since i already have one it's not asking me to create anymore and actually there's only one field that we need to fill up which is during creation it will ask us whether we want this consent screen using user type external or internal we will we need to select external so that we can use any google account to log in and then as for the other parameters we can leave them as default and it should work and the next thing that we need to set is the credentials why do we need credentials because we will be accessing a Google API and it's always required when doing that so here we can click the create credentials and OAuth 
select out client id and then web application and create make sure to specify the authorized javascript origins to localhost for 3000 because that is where our react app is running all right so let me show you my OAuth client ID. It's web client one, the default, and this is the URIs. And we will be needing this client ID. So we will copy it and we will paste it into our application. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I have already created this application and push it in GitHub. So that if you want to follow this exercise, you can clone it from this uh, URL which again will be available in the video description. But if you're familiar with React, you can create your own project by running npx, create React app, and the name of your project. So for the sake of this exercise, we will check this out and see what's happening inside this project. As with any other React app, the program starts with index.js. And here we can see that I'm using a provider and I'm injecting the store from the application store. So what is inside this application store? This project is my own, let's say, standard on how I create and structure my project. So if you have, if you're using a different pattern, uh, you can do so. So again, let's take a look at the application store from Framework Redux application store, which is this JavaScript file. So here we can see that I create a store from the root reducer, which is from Redux reducers here, which we will take a look later and then compose with dev tools. And I apply the middleware. Here I have the store and I return the store in a function. So here at the end of this JavaScript file, I call configure store so that it will return the created store which we injected in the index.js file. So this project is Redux enabled. We have our store. Next, let's take a look at the reducer. This is actually the index reducer that contains all the reducer, all the reducers of my application. In this case, we only have one, the authorization. So it's inside framework Redux module authorization. And what do we have here? It's a class that contains the reducer, the action creators associated with that reducer, and the types of the actions that we can perform. So here we have two actions, sign in and sign out. Later on, we will see how this works. Now, let's take a look at our form. So it looks like this, sign in with Google. In the app.js, we have this div and we have used the component Google Oat. So it's from here. We imported the Google Oat component from the Google Oat class. Actually, it's not a class, but rather it's a functional component. And this is what it looks like. Now, let's check this line by line. Here, I'm importing the React and use effect. Use date from React. I'm using the connect so that I'm importing the connect from React Redux so that I can connect the store to this component in this line connect and then i'm importing the actions inside the authorization module which i have shown earlier so this actions and then i'm using hooks this is the use state hooks and i have one state the oath and this is the set oath for more information about hooks use effect, use state, you can simply Google them. And you should arrive in this documentation. 
So going on, we are using the UCPEC hooks to initialize our Google API. So here I'm using this client API and this is the client ID. I mean, I'm using the client ID from the client that we have created from Google. And then I'm loading the Google API, which is actually, if you will take a closer look, is exactly looking like this. GAPI, that client that you need. But first, we load the client OAuth library from Google, which is, by the way, I forgot, sorry about that. We should, we need to include the uh, apis.google.com.js, api.js file as a script in the public index.html file, which is this one. Once this is included, we could load the Windows Google API library client OAuth, and then we initialize the client using these parameters using this client ID, which we have created earlier. And then we set the OAuth state here from the window GAPI OAuth get instance. And by the way, this is documented in this second URL that I have provided. If we will take a look, this is get OAuth instance. So it returns the Google OAuth object, which is initialized by this line so we haven't this line doesn't do any login it just get the instance that was instantiated and then we check if the current user is login using this is signed in i think it's also available here it returns whether the current user is currently signed in. And then we call the on o change, which is this line. And before we go here, let's take a look at this line. This is actually a listener from is signed in. And again, it's here in the documentation. Uh, it listens for changes in the current user's sign in state. So when a user log in or log out, this uh, listener will be called. So it's a callback function, which again is on no change, similar to this one. So we are reusing code. So what's happening here? At first, if the user is not log in, it will go here. It will dispatch the authorization is sign out or sign out and if the user is log in, it will dispatch the authorization that sign in. And what is happening in this event? Dispatch sign in and sign out. Again, let's take a look at the reducers authorization. So when a user is sign in, we set the is sign in variable to true and the user ID from the payload which we have set in the Google OAuth. So here, on OAuth is sign in, and then if it's sign in, we will dispatch the sign in action. And then we are getting the current user because we know that uh, the user is currently sign in. So we can get the user's ID and we will send that to the reducer so that it will become available to the Redux store, which is this store and then when the user is log out when the user has log out it will dispatch this sign out action creator which will set the sign in to false and user id to null continuing on these are just the ui codes so here i'm rendering this gui the sign in with Google and it just renders the GUI. So if is sign in is null, meaning uh, the Google 
client API is not yet initialized, we will show null or nothing. If the user is sign in, we will show the sign out button. And if the user is not sign in, we will show the sign in button. Again, let's take a look at the running application. I'm not logged in. So it will show this sign in with Google button. And we have this button which we which has an on click event and is calling this on sign in click event handler which calls the oath state which is this state that sign in which will call the google api library that will show this panel and will let us log in once the user login using the google api it will call the callback that we have set here, the listen callback. So it will call the on out change, which is this method or function. And then once we're signing, after we sign in, it will call this dispatch sign in and it will set the ID of the current user that we can access in this code. So we have it here. If is sign in, we can access the user ID. How do we access this user ID? This user ID is injected in our functional component. As you can see here, I have the dispatch object and the is sign in and user ID, which I have mapped to properties in here. So I have constant map state to props using the state. And as we know, the state is this state so it has a sign in property as well as user id and then we we assign the state oat because we assign that reducer oat reducer to oat so state that oat that is sign in or state that oat that user id which are this variable so we assign a sign in and user id which we map our state to properties of this functional component which we have injected here if you are confused i think you can install the install the uh, redux library so that you can observe the current state so here we have let's take a look at google chrome and I have this Redux library. So here we have the current state. Oat, state that oat that is sign in is true because we are currently sign in. And we have the user ID, which is this ID. Now if we sign out, we will see a new step here added. And then now the is sign in is false and the user ID is null. So, and our action is sign out. So sign in. Our action creator is sign in and then we have our state that contains the sign in and user ID. So I hope you learned something from this uh, tutorial and if you do, please do like my video and share it to your account so that other users will see it and hopefully it also help them in creating their React application that provides a login form if you haven't done so do uh, subscribe to my channel so that you will receive notifications when i upload uh, new videos related to programming and that's it thank you for listening and see you in my next video